Response times, persistence, compliance, overdrive, and panels. What do these all mean? Well, they all play a role in how well a monitor performs. Let's start off with persistence. This one's easy. Persistence is determined by the refresh rate of a monitor. This is your refresh cycle. You can find the persistence of a monitor by taking 1000 and dividing that with the refresh rate of your monitor. So let's take a 240 Hertz monitor, for example. You take 1000, divide that by 240, and you get 4.17, which in persistence means that a 240 Hertz monitor will display a frame every 4.17 milliseconds before changing to the next. If you do this with a 144 Hertz monitor, it'll be 6.94 milliseconds. So the higher the refresh rate, the less image persistence a monitor will have, which means you'll have a clearer moving image. The lower the refresh rate, the more image persistence a monitor will have, which means you'll get a more blurry image. But then we have response times. This is the metric used to measure how long it takes the pixels to transition from one color to the next. This basically just determines how much or how little ghosting a monitor produces, which is this trail right here. Now, before we go more into the response times, you also have to know about response time compliance. What is response time compliance though? All right, so let's take a hypothetical 240 Hertz monitor. As I mentioned earlier, a 240 Hertz monitor displays a new frame once every 4.17 milliseconds. If that monitor has a response time of 4.17 milliseconds or lower, then it's compliant, which means that there's no visible ghosting or smearing since the pixels are able to transition before the monitor refreshes to a new frame. If the response times are higher, like say seven milliseconds, it's not compliant. It's about three milliseconds slower than compliance, which means that it'll have some visible ghosting. So essentially, if you have a 240 Hertz monitor and want to make sure response times are compliant, you want the color transition to complete within 4.17 milliseconds. Compliance means you'll have no visible ghosting. Make sense? All right, cool. So now that you know that, let me give you a little quiz. If you compared a 144 Hertz and a 240 Hertz monitor, both with seven milliseconds of response times, would this alien look the same on both monitors? I'll give you a few seconds. Two seconds later. Now, before I tell you the answer, I'm legally obligated to tell you to like this video, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. All right, so do both the 144 Hertz and 240 Hertz monitor with seven milliseconds of response times produce the same result? If you answered no, good. If not, the reason why is because both monitors have different persistence. It takes 4.17 milliseconds for a 240 Hertz monitor to display a new frame. Whereas with the 144 Hertz monitor, it takes 6.94 milliseconds to display that new frame. And so in order for both the 144 Hertz and 240 Hertz monitor to display essentially no ghosting, they'll need response times that are right around their compliance. So about seven milliseconds response times for the 144 Hertz monitor and about four milliseconds for the 240 Hertz monitor. Also, while lower response times are always better, every millisecond below compliance will have diminishing returns. Kind of like going from a 360 Hertz monitor to like a 480 Hertz monitor. Ideally, you'll want a display with response times that don't go above compliance. Every millisecond over compliance means more ghosting and that's not what you want. So when you look at reviews from me, Hardware Unboxed, Tech Mama, HDTV Test, whoever, you shouldn't be too worried if a 240 Hertz monitor has four milliseconds of response times or if a 144 Hertz monitor has seven milliseconds of response times because there won't be that dreaded ghosty trail behind a moving image, mostly at least. Every reviewer uses different methodologies and five milliseconds from one reviewer may not be identical to five milliseconds from another. Now, is one or two milliseconds of response time better? Well, yeah, of course, but you'll have a hard time finding something with that kind of performance, especially if your budget is tight. And again, anything below compliance will have a minimal impact compared to say, buying a higher refresh rate monitor with lower persistence. It also depends on what you prefer or think you want. Some people just prefer lower persistence with higher response times just because they want the higher frame rates, while others prefer having the lower response times even if the refresh rate is lower, which again means higher image persistence. What you're looking for versus what you can get really depends on what your brain likes the most as well as your budget. Just don't fall for the one millisecond response times lies that monitor companies slap on the box. On average, you'll see some of the best and most popular 240 Hertz monitors hit around four milliseconds, which is fine. But now that brings us to overdrive. Pretty much all gaming monitors have this feature and depending on the brand, it might be called something other than overdrive, but it's still overdrive. 
But what overdrive lets you do is it lets you add more voltage to the pixels to lower the response times down a bit. So let's take our hypothetical 240 hertz monitor from earlier and say it has six milliseconds of response times. If it has six milliseconds of response times, it has some visible ghosting because it's not compliant with the monitor's 4.17 millisecond refresh cycle. So what you can do is enable or increase the monitor's overdrive setting, which again, adds more volts to the pixels, to force the pixels to transition colors faster than they otherwise would, to try and lower the response times of the pixels so you can lower or eliminate ghosting. Now you'll have to be careful with this because not all overdrives are created equal and the higher you set the overdrive to, the higher chance you'll increase the amount of what's called overshoot, inverse ghosting, corona artifacts, you call it whatever you want to, but I'm going with overshoot. Overshoot is this nasty blue fringy trail that basically replaces the ghosting. You want to avoid this as much as possible by finding the best balanced overdrive setting that has good enough pixel response times with as little overshoot as possible. To check what overdrive setting is best for your monitor, visit the test UFO website in the description and keep swapping between overdrive settings till you see what changed and keep at it till you find what's best. Side note, some monitors might not have that much of a change at all when going from overdrive setting to overdrive setting. So if you don't notice anything changing, it's not that something's wrong with the monitor. That's just how the company set up the voltage profiles for that monitor. Now, back to image persistence. If you want to take motion clarity to another level, you can look for a monitor that includes good black frame insertion tech. This could be called extreme low motion blur, ultra low motion blur, DIAC, aim stabilizer, and a bunch of other things. It all depends on the monitor brand you choose again. Now, black frame insertion, otherwise known as backlight strobing, turns on the backlight for only a short period of time for each frame, resulting in a decrease in image persistence. This helps improve image clarity, but as a trade-off, rather than a consistent trail, you get a distinguishable set of defined double images behind the moving objects, also known as crosstalk, rather than a consistent blurry trail. And in caveman talk, moving image more clear. If you... <laughs> You have to be careful with this technology though, because this is basically causing the display to flicker. And while you most likely can't see that flickering, your brain still knows something weird is going on and it can cause a headache, eye strain, or both. If you don't know if this will affect you, then it's worth trying out. But if you do know that this will give you a headache or eye strain, then you'll want to leave the black frame insertion tech off unless you're some kind of masochist. Now, we're not done with response times just yet because now we have to talk about panel technology. There are three main panel techs and an upcoming one. Number one is TN, then IPS, then VA, and OLED, specifically QD OLED. Now, TN panels usually have the best response times of any backlight monitor, but they have horrible viewing angles and colors. IPS panels typically have very similar response times to TN panels, but have much better viewing angles and colors. This one is the most popular panel type among buyers. Side note, nano IPS, fast IPS, and so on all count as IPS. Next, we have VA panels. VA panels almost always have horrible response times unless you're buying the Samsung Odyssey G7, G9, or any monitor that uses those panels. The reason why VAs typically aren't great is because VAs struggle to transition from very dark RGB values to other dark or mid RGB values. Other than that, VA panels are typically curved and have superior contrast ratios compared to most backlit monitors. And while viewing angles aren't as good as IPS panels, they're not far off and they're much better than TN. Colors are also good. Lastly, we have QD OLED, which is a new type of panel technology. There's only one monitor right now that has this tech, and that's the Alienware AW3423DW. By the way, get subscribed if you don't wanna miss our review on that. Just might take a while before I get one because now I have to wait till June. Anyways, QD OLED seems to be kind of like the best of everything. Best pixel response times, best viewing angles, best colors, everything. The only problem is that it's OLED and it can still burn in. Though from what it seems, QD OLED doesn't have as much of a burn in issue anywhere near as bad as regular OLED panels do at least, but we'll see over the years as more people use it, myself included. Now, between all of these panels, which one should you get? Well, it depends on what kind of gamer you are, but most people probably should go with IPS since it has the best balance between great colors and very good pixel response times, as long as that monitor isn't trash, because there are some trash IPS panels. 
There are some TN monitors that have marginally better response times than the best IPS monitors, but if you can get basically TN performance from an IPS panel, I don't see why anyone should get a TN panel unless there is a feature specific to a TN monitor that someone might want. Now for VA panels, it's really hard to justify buying them over their IPS counterparts because of the horrible response times and smear. Unless again, we're talking about the Samsung Odyssey G7 and G9. People typically buy them for their high contrast ratios, having much deeper blacks, which adds more depth to a given scene, which can make things more immersive and scary games more scary. If you care about contrast more than response times, then VA is for you. Lastly, we have QD OLED. Now to reiterate, I have not seen one in person, nor have I used one. But from what it sounds like all over the interwebs, this seems like the best panel tech ever. Like we're talking the best pixel response times, amazeballs, colors, and so on. So if you're interested in QD OLED, you're gonna have to stick with the only QD OLED display out right now, which is that ultra wide Alienware. But that's pretty much it. It's also more expensive than traditional panels, but to be honest, the early adopter tax is nowhere near as high as I thought it was going to be. So this could be a viable option for many buyers as more QD OLED monitors release over the years and they become more cheaper. And that's it. That's pretty much all I got to say. So if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you guys learned anything, let me know down below what you did learn. If you dislike the video, dislike it. Um, if you got any other things that I should add to this video, let me know so I can put them into pinned comments. So by the way, Check the pinned comments if there is any. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and as always, have a great day every day. Peace.